So, it's the morning after, and obviously, as you can see by these fine little bubbles coming out of the airlock, patience has paid off. I had added the yeasts to the wine must yesterday at noon, and it's now the morning after, roughly around 10 o'clock, and they seem to be churning along and converting that sugar in the wine must into alcohol. I do have a few concerns though. Um, roughly the temperature is around 70 to 72 degrees right now, and that's pushing towards the maximum limit for this type of wine yeast, the Epernay number two, Cote de Blanc. Epernay two, Cote de Blanc, um, roughly has a range of about 50 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. When it goes outside of that range, the yeasts will stop being able to do what they can to convert sugar into alcohol and oxygen into CO2. And once they stop doing that, you'll end up with a stuck fermentation. Uh, stuck fermentation basically means that the sugars that are left in the wine will stay there, the yeasts will stop working, and you won't be able to produce any more alcohol. So you'll end up with basically a very grape juicy, low alcohol wine. And it's very difficult to restart that fermentation. Also, the more time it takes to restart the fermentation, the increased chance of spoilage because the wine is exposed to oxygen then. Because right now, at least, as you can see the bubbling with the airlock, the yeast are producing CO2. That's what's bubbling out here in the airlock. And that CO2 is blanketing and protecting the must, the juice, basically, from going bad. Um, unlike oxygen, which oxidizes wine or oxidizes any fruits, like if you cut open an apple, for instance, the apple goes bad. It turns because it's being exposed to oxygen. The skin can no longer protect it. Same idea with the wine. As long as the wine is exposed to oxygen, it will go bad over time. It'll spoil, basically, you know, creating volatile acidity, turning to vinegar. 